How's it going, guys? It is 3.36 a.m. Tuesday, August 9th here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty question for biochemistry for step one. Nothing dramatic or crazy. We're just looking at enzyme levels in the setting of a patient scenario. USMLE will do this sometimes, all right? So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Not sure the clip. 20-year-old man goes for a 15-mile run. He's consumed water but no calories. Question wants to know his enzyme activity. So he's in the fasting state. Clearly his insulin to glucagon ratio is going to be low. Okay, His insulin levels are low. So uh, let's look at the first enzyme, glycogen phosphorylase. This breaks down glycogen, okay? It's for glycogenolysis in contrast to glycogen synthesis, which is glycogen synthase, so which would be glycogenesis. So in the fasting state, we expect there to be glycogenolysis, breakdown of glycogen. So glycogen phosphorylase is an up arrow, all right? So we eliminate all the bottom answers here. Our next enzyme, glucokinase. So this is the hexokinase variant in the liver. When we talk about glycolysis, con the first enzyme converting glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, hexokinase is ubiquitous in every cell in the body, except for the liver where we have glucokinase, which is the hexokinase variant. It's got a greater KM, less affinity for glucose, greater Vmax, greater saturation capacity for glucose. So insulin's role in terms of lowering blood glucose levels is it's not just upregulation of GLUT4 in skeletal muscle and adipose tissue, but by insulin upregulating glucokinase in the liver, the liver can act as a buffer for serum glucose. So that makes sense because if you have high glucose levels, you want there to be an enzyme that has a higher capacity for glucose, higher Vmax, and you want it to have a higher CAM. You want it to have less affinity for glucose because the priority goes to the cells throughout your body, not the liver. Okay, Only when the glucose levels are high do you want the liver to start taking up glucose. So the point is, glucokinase activity increased with increased insulin. It's going to be decreased in this setting because he's in the fasting state. So, so far we've got an up arrow for glycogen phosphorylase and we've got a down arrow for glucokinase. So we're looking at answers C and D here. So pyruvate carboxylase, a difficult enzyme. This is not to be confused with pyruvate dehydrogenase, which is the enzyme that converts pyruvate into uh, the TCA cycle, okay, when you're creating acetyl-CoA. So that's pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate carboxylase, in contrast, is actually a gluconeogenic enzyme. All right, so that's where, because when we want to make glucose and, we, and we're starting with pyruvate, we can't go back up to glucose directly because we have irreversible enzymes in glycolysis. So we have to cumbersomely convert pyruvate via pyruvate carboxylase down into oxaloacetate in the TCA cycle, and then via and then oxaloacetate via phosphoenyl pyruvate carboxykinase, PEP carboxykinase, goes back up to PEP, which in turn can go back up to glucose. So pyruvate carboxylase gluconeogenic enzyme in the fasting state, we expect activity to be increased. So in this case, we're going to have increased collection, phosphorylase activity, decreased glucokinase, increased pyruvate carboxylase. As I prefaced with, uh, USMLE will do this sometimes, where they'll ask you uh, for various enzyme activities in the fed versus fasting state. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.